Hi, welcome to another edition of AC Theory. So today we're going to be looking at deterministic context-free languages. So uh, we've been talking about context-free languages, which are those of context-free grammars and PDAs because they're equivalent to each other. And we saw that certain languages weren't context-free. Now we're going to look and see if we try to determinize the model, remove the non-determinism, does that actually change things? They were the same for DFAs and NFAs. What about for context-free languages? So the model that we're going to look at is something called a DPDA. So the D, of course, stands for uh, deterministic. So it's a deterministic PDA. And the meaning of this is that there is always exactly a one transition that we could ever apply. at all times. So, so for any state, as well as anything that's on the stack, like the top character, whatever it is, there's exactly one thing that you can do. So just as an example, so if we have a state Q right here, and we have a triple epsilon transition, I should draw that first epsilon a little better. So epsilon. So if we have something like this, then no matter what is on the input and whatever is on the stack, I can always apply this transition. So if I have some other transition over here that's not the same, then I could, in principle, apply this one and this one because this will, quote unquote, match with any possible input and uh, stack character. Um, but suppose instead that we had a Q prime state over here. And let's say that on one transition, we read an A, nothing to pop, nothing to push, as an example. The, whatever is push doesn't matter because you can push anything onto a stack. It doesn't matter what is on the stack or what's being read to do that. But I could have a different transition that uh, has a B on it and then maybe uh, pops an X and pushes a Y. And then maybe a third one where, again, I read a B and I... Uh, pop a Y instead and maybe push an X on that one. So it's clear that the transition involving the A and the ones involving B, that can be easily distinguished because if I have an A on the input, I can only apply this one. But if I have a B on the input, then I could theoretically be have a choice between these two, but I can only apply one of them. Why? Because uh, the Y here, if, if I have anything other than Y on the stack, I can't apply this transition. So uh, that would uh, limit me there. Then uh, if I have an X on the stack, I can only apply this transition and not this one. Okay, so and further, if I try to have any other transition that involves an A, maybe pops an X and pushes a Y or something, I can't have this green transition because if I have an A on the input and an X on the stack, then I can apply both of these transitions. So what we need to be able to do is to look at each state and think about for every possible input and uh, thing to pop, there's exactly one transition to do every single time. If there's a state with triple epsilon coming out, it can only have one transition, which is that one. Um, because if I try to add any other one, that I could have a transition that maps to both of them. And we can't have that in a deterministic PDA. Okay, so uh, th that's what we are going to call a deterministic PDA. It behaves like a normal PDA, except we are restricting what the transitions out of a state can be. So what's an example of a deterministic PDA, uh, deterministic context-free language? Well, we can easily see that all regular languages are DCFLs. And that's pretty easy to see because if I just have a DFA and add a, um, if I add epsilon goes to epsilon on each of the transitions, then each of the transitions is uh, distinguished by what is being read because it's a DFA. So that pretty clearly shows that um, all regular languages are DCFLs. DC, all DCFLs in 
pretty obviously are CFLs because they're already PDAs. It's just a restriction on what types of transitions are allowed, whereas normal PDAs have no restriction. So th that's pretty clear. Um, one thing we can show, which is the only thing we're going to do today, is 0 to the n, 1 to the n. This famous non-regular language is a deterministic context-free language. Okay, And what is the reason for this is that the normal PDA that we make for this, and I'm going to draw it here, is not a deterministic PDA. So I'll show you what that looks like. So remember we just pushed the dollar sign at the beginning, go to this state right here, where we, uh, when, whenever we see a zero, we push a zero on, triple epsilon our way over to another state where we match up all of the ones with the zeros. And then at the very end, if everything matches, we uh, pop with the dollar sign and accept. The only issue with this are this transition and this transition. Because, as I said before, if you have a triple epsilon coming out of a state, that, should, that needs to be the only uh, transition involving that state. But this one has a self-loop, and there's no real way around that. The only reason we have this triple epsilon guy in here is to allow ourselves to accept the empty string. Because if I have, oops, if I have anything red on this transition coming down here, then... Um, then I can't accept the empty string because it's, there's no way for it to even get down to this accept state over here. So uh, we need to actually fix that. So the way to fix it is to accept at the very beginning if it is the empty string and then do the same thing as before. And so this transition is okay because it's the only transition involving the, the start state. And so because it's um, two epsilons here. It doesn't have to be triple epsilon, but as uh, for the first two, the first two matter. The thing that's pushed does not matter what it is. Um, then we're going to come here, and we're going to self-loop just like before. No, no difference in the transition there. But now we, we can forget about the, ep the empty string because I can just accept right here. I don't have to do anything more. So then here what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, have a copy of that one matching with zero transition. So this is okay because if it's not the empty string, then it needs to be zero one at least. And so that means if we're going to accept, there must be at least one occurrence of one. And so this is okay to have. We may have one fewer self loop down here, but that's, we, we don't really care about that. And then we do everything else identically. And why is this okay? Well, this, this guy only has one transition coming out, and it matches with every possible input and uh, stack pop thing. Um, uh, uh, sorry, anything on the stack, but there's nothing on the stack in that case, but it, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, for this one right here, no matter what the input character is, it's either a 0 or a 1. And if it is a 0, then we can clearly uh, do this here. But what if the, there's a one on the input and there is a dollar sign on the stack? There's no matching transition involving that. So what we're going to need is a dead state, a trap state. Um, I've actually tried to put into a paper once uh, calling it a cemetery state because it's a little nicer. But uh, So what I'm going to have over here is a dead state. And... What this is going to do is going to read the rest of the input. Okay, so we're going to actually try to force it to read the entire input at that at this point. So we're going to add a bunch of transitions. I'm not going to outline what, how to do that, but and you can figure out how to do that. Uh, just to have the DPDA read through the entire input, um, and then what we're going to do from this state is we're going to have a transition that involves um, the one and a dollar sign. So the one, if we see a dollar sign and then we push nothing because we don't have to. Um, the only two stack characters are zero and dollar sign. So in both cases where there's a one on the input, we match it up either with the zero or with the dollar sign. One of those two is going to happen. 
With the zero transition, we don't need to do anything because whether or not there's a zero or a dollar sign on the stack, this transition will uh, map to both of them. So if a zero is on the input, you will do this transition. There's no way around it. And if you have a one on the on the input, you either do this one or you do this one because there's no other possible stack character. Um, same idea here. Uh, actually, no, no, we actually don't need to do anything right here because uh, at least with the one transition. So let's let's actually try to uh, think about this. If we have a one on the input. Uh, either there's a zero on the stack or a dollar sign. If there's a one on the a zero on the stack, then we must do this tr uh, transition because this one has a popping a dollar sign, then that's impossible. If we have a dollar sign on the stack at all, then we will come over here. If we have a zero on the input and a zero on the stack, then I can't do either one of these two. So I'm going to need to come over here. So I was wrong about that. We do need to add this transition in. And so then now what we need to do, what do we need to do here? Well, let's actually think about it. Well, there's, there's no transitions coming out of it. So uh, what we need to do then is we need to come over to here. Uh, and let's see. So we need to have every possible um, input output pair matched. So we can just add a simple triple epsilon transition, I think. And I think that would be totally OK. And so let's actually be absolutely sure. So this state has all pairs working, because it's double epsilon at the beginning. This one has all possible zeros, uh, because there's nothing specified for the stack here. This one has both occurrences of 1, which is OK. This one has the 1 here and anything with the dollar sign here. So the only other pair was zero on the input and zero on the stack, which we fixed here. And uh, if we have anything after that, then we need to not accept, which actually makes sense. Because if they didn't match up 100% perfectly, then, uh, then and if there's anything left on the input, then we need to uh, uh, go to the dead state, which is pretty nice. Okay, so that was, that was an example of showing that 0 to the end, 1 to the end was a deterministic context-free language, and we got more on DCFLs coming soon. So hopefully that was interesting. Leave your thoughts about DCFLs in the comments below. As always, please like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps us out. There are many other links in the, in the description if you want to support this channel further. If you want one-on-one -on -one tutoring, send me an email. And as always, uh, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.